What is up, everybody? Welcome to a new episode of The Scary, Strange, and Paranormal. My everything spooky, weird, and scary, evil, whatever you want to call it, podcast show. And <clears throat> we have been covering everything on this channel. This is a very special episode. I think you guys are going to really enjoy this show. I've been really working hard on this show and putting a lot of time into the show because it is a passion. And I worked real extra special on this episode and trying to come up with ideas for the show and really want to cover everything. And I've talked about local lore, um, being a New Jerseyan all my life. And I talked about local lore, and we have a publication here called Weird New Jersey. The guys are Mark and Mark. They, um, they're worldwide now. They're very famous. They're, they're actually on um, television, on all these crazy, spooky shows, like the Travel Channel, Sci-Fi. And uh, they have a magazine that blew up, and it's called Weird New Jersey. And I actually have every issue. I collect them. I have rare issues. I have hardcover books. I'm actually going to do a, um, one day I'm going to do a, a collection vlog, but I'm going to do a recent pickups of like the, um, recent issues that I bought. Cause I, I go back and I get the back issues or ones I missed and, um, they got some great stuff in them and I keep up on that. And I learn a lot from the book, you know, to help me on this show. We're going to actually dedicate this is the first part of many um, because there's so much to cover. I'm going to call this part one, and then sometime in the future, we're going to do a part two. But this is a weird New Jersey type articles that we're going to go over so you get an idea of what they cover. Um, and the, some of these have been really popular um, in my area, in my family. We talk about them. Then I'm going to have a couple personal experiences. Then we have a comment, because I always like to um, have a comment on this show uh, from a viewer. I always like to incorporate you guys at least once in an episode. So we're going to do that, and you guys are going to be able to get on here. Okay? So keep them comments rolling. We're going to do a little bit of both in this episode. We're going to be doing a little bit of um, checking on the desktop and switching back to face cam. Um... So lots to cover. So this will be part one of many in the future of Weird New Jersey um, episodes because there's so much and so much to cover and so much personal stuff that I have um, to talk about with each one. We talked about roads on here before, and I talked about Clinton Road. And Clinton Road will always be one of the most haunted roads in the world. Um, it actually was on a television show. They did... I think it was, I, I believe it was either Sci-Fi, FX, or Des or um, the Travel Channel. Might have been the Travel Channel. But anyway, it, it was during Halloween, and it was the top scariest places or roads. It was one of them. May have even been both um, in, the, in the United States. And one was in the world, and both number one was Clinton Road. Go back a few episodes. I talk about a dedicated episode about Clinton Road. Um, that road <laughs> dedicates its own episode. But we're going to start off with another road. Um, a couple roads, actually, in this episode. Roads seem to be a big thing um, in Weird New Jersey. Let's go right to the desktop. The Ghost of Annie's Road. So this is right off of a Weird New Jersey, and this was always a fan favorite. I've been to this road. I've actually done photography um, on this road. I've, I've done my own articles on this road. I wrote about this road. And um, this is a pretty scary road um, where you see what they call the woman in, the woman in white. The story is supposedly is that she was at her prom she got stood up, she was very angry, and she walked this street, this road, in anger, and she got hit by a, I think they say it was a semi-truck, and where she was found, 
her blood was splattered all over the road. It was a horrific, it was a horrific mob scene. Um, and she's been known to be a, a vanishing hitchhiker. I actually have a story recently on this series uh, about um, a personal experience that my father had when he was a kid that his mother, my grandmother, picked up a spirit. Go back and listen to that story. It's not this exact same area, uh, but this is a similar story. But her name is Annie. Um, it talks about the Passaic River. This is the area that she's at. This is the cover of the issue where they talk about the article. Here it is right here. This is where she was. Very nasty, horrific. Annie's death and gravesite. Riverview Drive. Laurel Grove Cemetery. So they tell you, you know, locations. Enter at your own risk. But she's been known to do some very nasty hauntings. I've been there quite a few times. Um, I have been scratched. I've been scratched on the arm, like almost like a stigmata. And then you have Gravity Road. Gravity Road is another road. Um, but a little bit of a different story. Uh, you may have heard of Gravity Road. Um, it is in a place called Franklin Lakes. Uh, near Bergen County, um, where supposedly your car can roll backwards uphill. And if you put flour on your car, you could see the little handprints of kids pushing your car. Then they tried to say it was a scientific thing with some kind of gravity and some kind of, you know, they try to do the scientific method, but there's also the spirits because they're saying that there's kids that live in the woods that their spirits come out and they push your car. There's a lot of explanations through the years that people have wrote that people have seen. Um, so you could read it. You could read about what people, you know, people say. Um, an optical illusion. Um, a ghost pushing us backwards. Um, a spectral child who pulled cars uphill to the spot he was run down and killed. Um, pretty scary. So that's Gravity Road or Gravity Hill. Here's one of my favorites. Now, this is interesting. This is called Jet in the Woods. I grew up. I grew up with my father listening to this story before even Weird New Jersey covered it. Um, in my area, in, not in particularly this area, but northern New Jersey, not far from here, maybe less than a half hour, not even, there is an actual abandoned jet in the woods that's actually decaying. This article was, was posted in 2011. From what I heard, I haven't been there recently. I heard there's almost nothing left. Once this article and Weird New Jersey took over, um, it became an attraction, and I think a lot of people took pieces of it. And um, there's very little left of the jet, from what I understand. It's a very weird story. Now, I've read this article. I've read articles from Weird New Jersey. I've read personal articles on other forums. Here's some pictures. Now, my father grew up in this area, actually hunted in this area, white-tailed deer and turkey, so he knows this area in and out. It doesn't say, actually, exactly. It tells you West Milford, which is right around here. I have family that lives there now. I could probably walk to this location. It doesn't exactly tell you, but my father claims this is off of a road, not far off of a road called Mockapin Road which we had family that used to live there. Um, you know, a lot of these publications don't want 
you know, the sites to be exact. You could probably Google Earth this and see the jet, they say, but I don't think there's much left. I read this story, and, and this is a different story from what I've read before. Um, I've read from personal people that lived in this area that knew the story at the time. It was what they call the government or the... the, the um the arsenal, or the, um, what do they call it? I can't think of the name, but anyway, where this jet flew out of was wanted to be kept hush-hush, okay? The base, the army base, wanted this to be kept hush-hush because they were kind of, like, embarrassed by what happened. But this talks about how, in 1962, a Lockheed T-2V Star crashed in West Milford, which is 50 miles from Manhattan. The jet hit 900 feet from a nearby neighborhood. Um, oops. What happened here? But basically what it says is that two pilots were on a training mission and were inexperienced and miscalculated and had to land the jet and destroyed the woods and the jet was pretty much left there. That's not... What I read years ago, what I had read was that there was a pilot that had a girlfriend. And he was from Picatinny Arsenal. And basically what I had heard was that he was in a love triangle and she had cheated on him and he was in a rage and he took the plane without permission, and was trying to land the plane in her house, was trying to crash the plane in her house, and he miscalculated and ran out of gas, and he had to land the plane. And they were so embarrassed that they kept the story hush-hush and basically didn't want to report it to the news or anything and just let the jet rot. I, I kind of more, lean more towards that story. Um, because if you read between the lines... Funky shit was happening. And that to me sounds more believable. Because wouldn't you want to keep that in the closet? You know what I mean? That's my belief. We go to none other than the story of Waving Willie. You guys won't know about this guy, but I do. And he's actually, if you look him up, he's world news now he's long past he is passed away but this was basically a guy that would sit in front of his house in a chair and he would wave he was always there everybody's seen him rain snow winter summer fall spring holidays nighttime daytime this guy was in his chair and he would wave. And anybody that went past his house on the main road, a lot of people travel to work and whatnot and go into the city, so they had to pass him. He would, he, they would know, know him to wave at them. And this is his memorial because he's now passed. His chair still sits there. Um, he's in, This is uh, 206 in Byram Township. I used to go there practically every day and he would he would just wave and wave and now here it says an a and p had opened he would sit in front of the store and greet shoppers or he would be at home on his in his chair in front of his house and um he never stopped waving people didn't know where Byram was, but if you said Waving Willie, everybody said, oh, I know where that is. <laughs> and they didn't even know his real name, but they knew him as Waving Willie. Look at this, they made memorials for him. Oh, what's going on here? Computer has a mind of its own. But anyway, Waving Willie... He's iconic. My wife used to go to work and have to, and actually literally passed him every day. He would wave to my wife, Michelle. Now, I got three personal stories. The reason why this one is personal is because this one really isn't 
that big with Weird New Jersey. Now, I've tried to have them cover this. I talked to Mark and Mark personally. I've sent them articles. I've sent them, you know, an experience that I had. I sent them pictures. They did talk about it briefly in past Weird New Jersey issues. But there's so much more that they really should cover. So I've been doing a lot on my own in covering this. This this is like very close to where I live. This is called the Outlook Lodge. Now, it's on an abandoned, well, not an abandoned road, but it's like on a hillbilly country road, back road. But you can't get to this house. You can't drive to it. You can't get to it from a road. The house is almost like it's not meant to be. It's It was made not to get to. Okay? It, it has no access. You have to literally park, and you have to know where you're going. So it has to, you have to know about this place. You have to park, and then you have to hike a few miles straight uphill in thick woods. Then you get to it. And it's abandoned. It's running down. They're trying to actually fund, fund it. There is like a um, a charity going around. Um, they actually, in Christmas time, there's a bottom lodge below this that they use for the holidays. And they do Christmas tours, and they actually make <laughs> homemade Christmas ornaments of this place. But this was like one of the early... It's very historic. It's very old. This is the this is the Outlook Lodge, and it's not known to be scary or haunted. When you look this up, it's very historic because these two guys that owned it, named Turner, were very into art, built sculptures and paintings in and out of this building. And they were one of the first that did like artificial insemination of like cows. And they did all these scientific experiments on dairy farming. And they were the first to like do all this kind of crazy stuff that's like patent today. Like they're the like originators. And they're the turners. And they both died, of course. And their family just basically let the, ha- let the property go. Um, they were brothers and I'm going to tell you about this place. This place is probably one of the most haunted places on earth. I've wrote famous ghost hunters on TV like Zach Bagans, Jason Hawes of Ghost Hunters, all these famous people to go to this place. Now they have never responded to me. But they really should. And if they don't, I'm going to actually do a special on this house. Because there, this place is fucking creepy. Um, I know how to get into the place. I've actually toured inside of it. I, I could tell you that there were voices in the house. I have them on my phone, on my voice recorder. The house was completely empty. Um... There were literal spirits walking in front of me. I mean, in front of me. I felt them. I heard them. I was going up the steps. There was somebody in front of me, invisible, going up the steps with me. Um, I have never experienced this, but many, many people have told me that sometimes through the woods you could see the electric on in the house with the two top windows that you see here lit there's no electric in this house there's no lights um there's that so you could hear howling coming from the house in the middle of the night there are caskets actually here we go there are caskets actually built in the house i've went up here i've went up here and all of the electric is currently shut off. They, they they stopped everything from running because it was too costly. And right now, 
the house is caving in because of the rain and the water. You can't really go up the stairs anymore. And the roof is, is like I said, caving in. The, the house is probably going to be condemned soon. Only reason why it's not is probably because it's historic and maybe they're not allowed. Um, it's a shame. But they are, like I said, trying to... I don't know how much they raised since then. It's probably going to cost a lot of money. Um, but I could tell you from personal experience that this place is mad haunted. I did read an article, and I believe it's the one that they posted in Weird New Jersey, that it was a girl, it was a girl camp. And there's a there's a story that a girl had wrote about the sculptures changed. There's actually a picture of one. Here. The sculptures on the house changed. And she says that this sculpture that you see is not the original face. And one night it changed and it never ever changed back. And she never went there again. And that she saw spirits in the house when they had their school camp there. Girl camp. Um, that's the article that I remember reading. So that's the Outlook Lodge. Pretty, pretty scary. Okay. I'm going to switch back real quick. Uh, to me. Here's a story that my father had told me. Another story that I, he told me. Um, well, that my uncle had told him. My uncle now passed away. But this is his story. Um, I believe this happened in Bloomingdale. He was walking. At night with his dog, he had a German Shepherd. So, you know, a very alert, you know, dog. And, you know, a lot of animals have been known to pick up paranormal activity. They could sense it. So he had his ears up and he was growling and my uncle didn't know why. So he figured it was an animal in the woods. It was a deer, maybe, um, Maybe a feral cat or like a raccoon or something. So he stopped and he looked around and right across, going across the street in front of him was an an old soldier with a musket came out of the woods and paid no mind to him, was walking in a straight path and walked right across the road back into the woods. And the dog was flipping out. I think they call that a residual spirit because they're on a path. You know, they're they're there's an then there's an intelli intelligent spirit that's knows their surroundings, but then there's one that's caught on a loop. Uh at one time he probably used that, you know, in the army in the war or whatever, a Confederate soldier. It was very historic that area. They had found like cannonballs, grenades, and this was like the middle of the night. True story. Pretty scary, pretty creepy. He said that he'll never forget the goosebumps that he got. I'm going to jump back real quick to a, to a, um, to another personal story. Mothman. Now, Mothman is normally a West Virginia folklore legend. Um, I've talked about Mothman before, but I've met a lot of people that have seen him in New Jersey, and Weird New Jersey does cover him. But when you look up Mothman, the first thing that you see is West Virginia. They have the statue, Point Pleasant, not Point Pleasant, New Jersey, Point Pleasant, West Virginia. They talk about him. He's in the game Fallout, uh, Fallout 76, everybody's favorite game. Um, there he is. So Mothman 
is a pretty scary dude, right? I got a not an experience me personally, an experience from a fr- friend of mine, a close friend of mine that has a true Mothman um, experience in New Jersey. And the interesting thing about this is that he's not really a paranormal guy or not paranormal, but like weird, strange, like he's not going to talk to you about Bigfoot. So this is something that he really experienced, okay? And he's very believable. And he wouldn't make this up because he's not really into this kind of thing. And the thing of it is, he's very religious as well. So when he told the story, it was like, wow, you know, like, why would this guy be telling this? Other thing is, is that I've talked to some other people and they actually describe their story almost identical. In his honor, because he's a very unique person, he's from Brooklyn. I'm going to imitate him in his voice and I'm going to tell the story. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back um, to my full cam, my face cam. Okay? <laughs> I'm not making fun. First of all, this is a, a good friend of mine. His name is T. And uh, we actually sing together. And I'm going to actually imitate him telling the story. I don't know. Like one time I was coming back from brand practice with my band, Killer Justice. We were doing some tunes and I was doing some karaoke. So all of a sudden, I got in my car, and my mother was sitting next to me. Hey, right, Ma? Hey, Ma, am I right? And I was driving, and I was, you know, I was driving. I saw something. I didn't know what it was, but it was, like, big. And all of a sudden, there was a car in front of me, and the, and the thing landed on the car, and it was, it was big, and it was, like, had wings. And all of a sudden, I stopped the car, and I was looking at it, and it was, like, fluttering. And it was like fluttering with its wings. Right, Ma? Hey, Ma, was it fluttering? My mother saw it. She was there. And I kept saying, what is this? What is this? And all of a sudden, it, it flapped its wings and it took off. And I saw it. It was Mothman. And that, and that was the story. And I'll never forget it. And, uh, and like I said, I had heard from the past other stories about Mothman. And they were all very similar. So who knows? Who knows? And uh, it could be true. It could be, you know, Mothman made its way to New Jersey. Why not? Or maybe they procreated and they had little Mothmans and then they, I don't know, maybe they grew up, you know, they got big. Maybe there's more than one. I don't know. But that's the story. But anyway, that's my episode for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I got lots more um, episodes coming. And uh, oh, we didn't get to the uh, we didn't get to the personal question, the personal comment. My bad. I actually got it on my computer here, so I'm gonna look and see. Almost forgot. Sorry about that. Um, this is from my good friend Mark Millard. Millard, you heard me mention him before on on the show, and he's writing in, and he says here, just want to say I love this series. It really is scary, but I can't resist watching it. I had a dream one time of my deceased mother, and she told me to look out for the rose. About a week later, I found a strange rose petal in my hallway. To this day, I still don't know where it came from. I hope it's from my mother. I keep it now on my dresser as a reminder that she is looking over me and protecting me. I hope. Keep up the great work, Sean. Oh, Mark, that's exactly what it is. Um, absolutely. And I've heard these stories before from other people um, about flower petals. Um, I, there's a real religious friend of my mother's, um, and she... She's very, very religious, like big time. And she finds the petals all throughout her house all the time. Um, so there, it's a sign. It means something, especially you had a dream about it. Um, so they're actually telling you, you know, to look out. And that's, that's a sign, 100%. There's no coincidence in that at all, I believe. 
there there will be skeptics that are going to say, oh, I mean, come on, really? You had a dream that your mother told you about the rose, and then like a week or whatever later, you found them. Come on, think about it. Um, absolutely, absolutely a sign, and that's good, and that means, you know, she's there, and she's watching over you, and uh, it's a gift. It really is. That's an amazing thing. That's an amazing story, an amazing experience. And there's not a lot of people that can tell you otherwise. I mean, there's going to be skeptics, but they talk out of their ass. Take care, guys. Hope to see you on the next episode. Be scary, be strange, and stay tuned. <laughs>